What's up, happy people? I'm Robert Arrington. This is Deer Meat for Dinner. We're out at my ranch in Hope Sound, Florida. I mean, there's a lot of work to keep this place up. And now that we're under this self-quarantine, we're out here doing a lot of work. So I just teamed up with John Deere Tractors and Everglades Farm Equipment, and we are gonna make this place the way I always dreamed. Look out here real quick, check this out. See that, that's a huge oak hammock. Those are big oak trees with giant cabbage palms, but it's so thick under there that you can't see anything. So they're bringing out all kinds of equipment and we are going to tear that all out, move it all, make that beautiful under there. All around camp, we're gonna completely manicure this place and make it look like I've always dreamed it would look. Mom, and leave some everything that you see under there, if it doesn't start with oak and in with tree, it's out. No, come on, leave those palmettas there in that Negative. Cabbage, Mom. Now this is what I'm talking about, y'all. We have the proper equipment to get the job done. In order to get a job done, you gotta have the right equipment. Well, this is a dream come true. Got a big excavator, skid steer with a mulcher. We got a couple of John Deere gators. Job done, baby. That's blue game. Myself. Nobody. How do you get between two trees? Though? What I got there and back then. That, that takes skill to get that stuck. It takes. That's like 40 years of experience to get wedged between two trees. Hey, I'm gonna take that tree down. So we've gone from using state-of-the-art technology to all the way to the most basic of technology, fire. is a great equalizer when it comes to cleaning out brush. All this brush in this tree, this fire will literally run right through it, cook it out, and return all that nitrogen back into the ground. Seeing this place go from what it was, basically just a jungle, to an open area where we can have picnics and watch the game and just, it's just, it's a dream come true. We've come in here and cleaned out this entire old horse corral. This is where way back in the day, the, the cow hunters, when they were here working on the Harris Ranch, this is where they had put their horses, or if they had a couple cows, they could put them in here. We're gonna use this as a tenting area. You tell me a kid that does not like forts and playing. Later yeah, this dad. year, me and my family, my crew are going on a huge trip. And so I want my kids to really get used to camping out and tenting out and being in the outdoors. So. Hey, Dad. What are you doing? Nothing. Hanging out? Hey. I'm playing with you. Aww. She's sleeping, honey. I'm not sleeping. <laughs> are you sleeping? Go to sleep. Go to sleep. She's sleeping, honey. She went oh to sleep. Oh my goodness, that was so fast. How do you do it? You wake up like this. Dad, thank you for all your help, man. 
You've been huge. All right, you guys. All I can tell you is the last three days have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much to Everglades Farm Equipment, PJ Cruz, and John Deere Tractors. We have turned my camp into something I've been dreaming about for many years. We're gonna start off inside. Sarah came through and organized everything. I mean, all the beds, she did all the linens, cleaned everything, organized everything. Bam, we got eight beds that are all fresh, clean, smelled just like you're at home. You know what time it is, baby. Hornady, come on out here. Ta-da. Can you believe that? Just, if you look at here, that was all so thick and overgrown that it was virtually useless. This camp is a place for us to come out as friends, as family, as outdoorsmen, and enjoy the wildlife together. Let me show you what we just did out in the back. Camp is right there. Look, right there is a castaway feeder. We just put that thing up. And the reason I put it here is because I want game from all over to come and call our camp home. <laughs> Good hey that's why i like these castaway feeders man <laughs> nothing throws feed like a castaway before we started this property job this was all so entirely thick that you couldn't see anything i mean right out here look at this you see this area over there that big low land it was just grown up and it was totally useless area hey, wait. hold on all you ladies out there, comment below. He calls me a squirrel. There's a difference between stashing stuff and organizing things. So, she is a squirrel, y'all. So if you guys, if there's on, a hole, she's on. gonna put something in. But organized and nice and neat. So ladies, back me up. There's a difference between squirrel and stuff and being organized, right? Yeah. Well, I do appreciate all the hard work you've put in out here. And if you guys are wondering why I'm holding this flag, you're gonna find out in just a few minutes. Look here behind us. This is what we would call an oak hammock big oak canopy. We've gone in and we've pulled out just thousands of feet of vines. We've dug up all the palmettos. I don't know if you can understand, this entire area behind us was a useless jungle before. Now it's wide open, beautiful. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna fertilize it with 12-12-12 fertilizer, which is great for the oaks. It's gonna give those acorns all the nutrients they need to grow and anytime you have oak trees that are dropping acorns you're going to have lots and lots of game we're also going to add one more feeder out here so that if you're sitting on the front porch or on the back porch you're going to be able to see some wild game every morning and every afternoon my question to you is if this was yours what would you do with uh, okay, it okay wait i have an idea already what we should put a tire swing right here a tire swing that's yeah. a great idea or that's somewhere. a great idea absolutely all right Let's keep on moving, y'all. This is an old corral. They would probably put horses or maybe even cows in this corral area. We decided to clean it all up, trim it all out, and put a camping area in there so the kids can use it as a fort. Just a great way to use, utilize camp in a, in a beneficial, family-oriented manner. Now, next up, Now this area was completely useless. It was just a big old grown up jungle mess. I went in with the, with the skid steer and the mulching head and I just ate that whole area out nice and clean. And we designed our own 3D archery range. We've got a turkey, a hog, a couple of deer, a bear, and two block targets. Gotta say thank you very much to Faradine Outdoors for sending us some really cool targets and uh, I can't wait to shoot my butt off here. Practice at the range creates comfort and confidence in the woods. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, there's a turkey there. Hey, Arya, if you could go hunting for anything right now, what would you get? Which one? I'm taking it. The hog? You want to go hunting for a hog? Uh, wait, oh my gosh. Here. Here's Here. a question. 
if you could go hunting for anything right now, like if you could just say, I want to go hunting for that, what would you go hunting for? Emma, come here. Mm. Okay, let's keep on Wait, keeping on. Ask Emma. Emma, if you could go hunting for anything with daddy, what would you go hun hunting for? A pig? Hey, pig is unanimous. Now come check this out, y'all. This is my generator area. That's our cabin. This was all grown up and there was really no way to see what was going on over at the shed, the skinning room from the cabin. So we came in, trimmed it all up, cleaned it all up. And now, no matter where you are at camp, if I'm here, I can see what's going on at the camping area. I can see what's going on at the cabin. I can see what's going on at the cleaning shed. And you know what? Then it makes it much more safe. You know what's going on. Oh, everyone's going to be shooting the, their bow and arrows over at the shooting range. Here's our, cab, here's our camping area. There's the cabin with the fire. It's safe. It's beautiful. And it's a dream come true. Now. Let me tell you a cool story. My grandpa, Shotgun Shiver, Carl Shiver, that's my mom's dad. He was an original cow hunter, Florida cracker, worked with a whip in his hand on the back of a horse, hunting cows. It was a hard life. He lived in a plywood home. My mom grew up poor as dirt. But you know what? He instilled in us hard work, morality, and friendship, family, and the, the desire to go and do it. Uh, he was in the military and he passed away a few years back and my mom's had this flag and whenever I redid camp, mom was like, let's fly your Paul's flag at camp. So, Paul, this one's for you, brother. You're going to be flying at camp. If Paul was still alive, I guarantee you he would only want to be at camp. With or without power, wouldn't matter to him. He loved cows, he loved skulls, and he loved oak hammocks. He also, he loved swamp cabbage. So this was folded at his funeral. know whenever I started this whole project I've wanted to to do this for a long time you know but I didn't even know how to get started so I got to say a huge thank you to my dad he's like fixed our entire road my brother blue Gabe who has worked with heavy equipment his whole life but happened to just miraculously turn into a youtuber his name's blue Gabe but he's my brother Gabriel he helped tremendously. PJ Cruz from Everglades Farm Equipment. Gosh, you're a lifesaver, man. You, you made this all happen, bringing out all that amazing gear. Everybody at Everglades Farm Equipment, John Deere Tractors, all the guys that, that helped. My mom. Listen, you've tore out enough trees. Sarah, my, my beautiful wife, for cleaning up the inside and and making this place more than just a camp. This is this is part of our home. So it's like overwhelming, especially with my Paul's flag right there. That's like just it's over the top. So whew, that's all I got for you guys today. Certainly gonna be a lot more, but it's all I got for you today. I love you guys. God bless. We'll see you soon. We gone. Ah, it's pretty, pretty tough stuff, you know? Golly. Oh, it's nice. It's nice. Now, uh, where did you grow up? Indian Town. Indian Town, Florida? Indian Town. What, was, what, what, what did you do for a living most of the time? Oh, well, my daddy would cow hunt, you know, for Uncle Drew Bowers. He, him and Uncle Paul uh, had the cows, and he'd always cow hunt for him. Yeah. Now, so you was cow hunting. What else would you do? What else would a cowboy in South Florida do whenever you was growing well, up? Well, out in the woods, you know, it was those slaughtered posts. And there'd be some on the ground and some were standing. Yeah. And we'd cut the six step of them all. That way how long were they? Six foot. All right, how much did they pay you for one of them lighter knot posts? 
Twenty-five cents. Twenty-five cents. Twenty-five cents.